Hello, I'm Marla Smith with Horse Lover Magazine. And for this video, Dave Evans, our trainer, will be talking about various bridles and bits and how we use these to produce and reinforce lightness, suppleness, and responsiveness in our horses. Dave, tell us about this first piece of headgear that you would use in training a horse. Marla, what we have here is a traditional Spanish hackamore with a bosal serving as a nose band and uh, a hackamore knot tied around the end, the heel knot of the hackamore of the bosal, and then a feodor tied to create the throat latch and support the the weight of the bosal in the proper position to to school the horse. Now the reins that are used with this outfit are um, made of horse hair. They are scratchy. They have a good bit of feel to them so the horse has something to respond to. They're closed reins in that they're looped. There is a lead rope that comes off the end of the bosal and you can do several things with this. You can tie it with a saddle string. You can tie it around the saddle horn or you can take it and tuck it in your belt loop. And when you tuck it in your belt loop, you've of course got uh, the opportunity to control the horse whenever you need to when you come down. The weight of the bosal that you start using with the horse is important. It needs to be balanced and it needs to be such that it can be used to direct the horse's position when he's moving um, and when you're creating those cues that he's going to be responsive to. This is the first piece of equipment that I would usually try to start a horse in. If I knew nothing about the horse, after we'd done some groundwork, this is the outfit I would put him in. Dave, I know you built this yourself as far as putting the various pieces together. Can all of this be purchased as one unit? Yes, the bosal itself is really a work of art if you look at it closely. It's braided rawhide, and it's around a rawhide core which gives it a twisted, uh, a piece of rawhide, probably a half inch in diameter that's been, uh, it's, it's been wetted and then twisted into a position in which it would serve as the foundation for the braiding that goes around it. That gives it some shape that you can modify depending upon the horse. Some hackamores that don't even have the, the Fiador or the hackamore knot. They'll simply be held in place by a hanger over the horse's ears. They'll have the, they'll have the Makati tied in such a way that it creates a certain amount of tension on the horse's nose. Um, well, and Dave, we know what you've built here is top notch. Dave, show us how we take this off at the end of our ride. To, to remove this hackamore, there's simply a sheet bend knot tied in the throat latch. Well, what I'll do is before I throw the reins over his neck, over his head to, to remove it, I will, I will loop the lead rope so that I've got control of him as I remove the, the head stall and the, uh, and the bow saw. And then just lift it over his ears and drop it down. Dave, tell us about this modified hackamore. I know Sonny spent a lot of time in this one. Marla, this is basically the same as the hackamore that we had on him previously. There, there are two differences in it. One, of course, you can see the, we've got the, the uh, hackamore heel knot tied here, and we've got the, the feodor that supports it and then the, creates the throat latch. The bosal is a little bit smaller in diameter. Not a lot, but, but a bit smaller. The reins are what creates the significant difference. You've got essentially what are traditional open reins. And you, of course, simply ride with these as you would with any kind of normal rein arrangement. For me, it's a little simpler to handle and it's more in line with what you'll be riding traditionally in a, in a bridle. Just hemp rope that uh, has been braided out to, to create a, a generally flat rein. And the fact that the reins are long enough that if you happen to drop them from the saddle, 
they're not going to fall just off to the ground. They're long enough that they're going to stay on the horse's neck. And I know, Dave, I've ridden my mare Sierra in a one, a set that you made for us, and I have found it very beneficial to improve my riding and my handling of my horse. The thing that you realize is you're not in the horse's mouth and you're not as reluctant to take hold firmly if necessary. Dave, tell us about this snaffle bit that we've used to transition Sonny. Marla, what we have here is an egg butt snaffle with a hanger. And this is the type of outfit that we would use to acquaint any horse with a, a bit for the first time. If we had a, a green colt, what we would do with him would be to, to put him in a stall or in a dry lot wearing this and let him wear it for an hour or so just to get accustomed to having it in his mouth. It does have a copper mouthpiece, which is a little more appealing. And in Sonny's case, what we'll, we'll do or what we have done is the same progression from hackamore to bridle that we would follow with not only the, uh, the snaffle bit, but also with a curved bit. We would begin to use smaller and smaller bosons, and we would allow him to carry the bit. The hanger does have a split in it, which can go over his offside ear and maintain the position of the, um, of the bit and of the, the bridle as well. Now the bit, the depth to which it hangs is adjusted to where it just essentially creases the corner of his mouth just a little. Uh, and it's, in, in this case, since there are no reins attached, that adjustment is not terribly critical. Now, the reason that there is a curb strap on this bit is to keep him from rolling the bit in his mouth. And the other thing, when you use a snaffle, when you do have a curb strap on it, when there are reins attached, the curb strap keeps the, the bit from being pulled all the way through his mouth. Dave, tell us about this last bit that you're going to use in Sonny's training. Marla, what he's carrying now is simply a curb bit. It's the bit that most people think about when they hear the term bit. It has, this is simply a medium shank bit doesn't have a lot of, a lot of leverage to it, uh, nor does it have a very long shank. The mouthpiece is, it's also copper. Every one of the bits that, that we're using are copper. They have some copper inserts in them to, causes the horse to salivate a little more and make him a little more receptive to, to the bit. The height of the port, when you pull back on the, on the reins, it engages the, the shanks. Sure. The other thing that happens is the port, dependent upon the height of the port in the horse's mouth, it comes in contact with the roof of his mouth and exerts some pressure there as well. A horse that's ridden with this should be pretty well finished as far as his neck reining goes because this is not a bit to pull a horse around with as you would with a snaffle or with a hackamore. So Dave, you've used a low port and short shanks. Medium shanks. Right. Um, Medium and, shanks. And again, it's simply a middle of the road, light leverage bit. Thank you, Dave. That was a great lesson.